Hello, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to Best Few Plays of the Week. In this episode, we'll see The Mighty Mouse, a fearless combat scout, and some great cooperation from early main battle tanks. Roll out! A steel wool bears the brunt of enemy fire so their teammates can focus on winning the game. Sometimes that means doing something that looks suicidally stupid and living to tell the tale. To Imi Voltiger from the EU region takes the mighty mouse into a standard battle on Lakeville and heads down to the lakeside road without hesitation. Shells start pinging off the armor almost immediately, but aside from track damage, it could just as well be a light drizzle. The mouse is not just a slab of armor, though, as the T-28 prototype learns the hard way. Voltige drives back and forth, dealing damage when the opportunity arises. The mass enemy force to the south is starting to be a problem. The mouse pushes forwards, drawing even more of their fire and helping the allies take them out. All that remains is pushing into the enemy base and mopping up the remains. Easy, and with a thousand hit points left over. There you go, a mouse doing what it does best. Well played, Steel Wall. Now we'll head over to the Asian region for this week's Top Gun. Mayo Jaime is lucky enough to land on top tier at Abbey and goes on a rampage in an E25. The fast little TD gets into position and waits in ambush. The first victim is a thick-skinned Black Prince. A flurry of shells forces it to retreat, badly damaged. A T67 takes a shot and misses. Mayo Jaime climbs up like a mountain goat and shows the enemy who's the boss. More rock climbing follows as the E-25 makes its way to the Abbey. Once up there, Mayo Jaime sneaks up behind an enemy like an assassin and takes them out. The enemies are pushing into the capture zone, but the E-25 is ready. Deadly ambush fire from the Abbey cuts down the wannabe invaders one after another. Who's next? The Japanese tiger manages to retreat just in time, so Mayor Jaime heads that way at high speed. A shoebox SPG is encountered on the way and sent to the recycle bin. The Tiger is still here, but not for long. Back at the home base, an OE takes out the allied SPG and volunteers as the next target. A capture starts, but it turns out to be an artillery piece rather than the OE. Mayo Jaime blows it up and goes looking for the big guy. Here it is! The Tier 5 Heavy is massive, but that actually makes it easier. Once the E-25 gets close enough, the enemy can't depress its gun far enough to fight back. It's game over. A nice and lively killing spree from the vicious little E-25. Well played, Top Gun! Next, we head back to Lakeville on the EU service. The Defender of the Week is Krobuski, who commands a WZ-131 light tank. The battle starts as the WZ-131 heads south. It's the same row taken by the mouse in the earlier replay, although it must be said, Krobuski is being a little more cautious. The KV-13 is a great target, and the defender keeps firing until a killer has been secured. The enemies have broken through in the west, and Krobuski races back to the start location to save the arty. The Chaffee may be fast, but it's not killing an SPG on this defender's watch. The IS-3 is already in trouble, and Krobuski helps take it down even faster. Overall, things aren't looking so great, though. The game is 4 against 9, and the enemies are capping. The defender whittles down a KV-5 and has to retreat from a fight with a Bulldog.
The AMX charges across open ground, and before Krabuski can finish it off, an SBG attempts a shotgun charge. After some intense moments, they are both dead, and probably wondering what just happened. The IS-6 could win this with a bit of HE splash damage. It misses the shot, however, and a pair of APCR shells puts it down for good. The capture is above 70%, but in an encounter game, there's still time to do something about it. The invading Tiga even shows itself, but the shot misses. The defender starts racing around the lake only to be stopped by a shot from the SU-152. The TD is dealt with quite handily, but the cap is now close to 90. Krabuski gets moving, but the Tiga reveals itself again. It's now too late to go around the lake, and the reset has to happen from here. Aim as much as can be done before vision is lost, and bingo! A reset from 95%, and the defender is no longer in a hurry. The Bulldog is still out there, but it's not much of a threat anymore. It tries to line up a shot, but it seems there's something wrong with the tank. Okay, it's time to hunt down a Tiga. The big cat is spotted once again from across the lake, but the last APCR round bounces off its arm. A follow-up shot with HE does do damage, and the WZ heads off around the lake to finish the match, up close and personal. Two HE shells will have to be enough. The Tiga is caught facing the wrong way, but the first shell isn't enough to kill it. The enemy panics and tries to run, making for an easy kill. A Thaden's victory for the defender. Those medals and damage numbers add a little bonus to an amazing game. Excellent work, defender! Staying in the EU region, we have Q to the face, driving our Cromwell B in a different kind of scout game. The match is a tier 7 standard battle on Sand River. Q to the face, spawns at the vanguard and charges forward as soon as the clock stops ticking. Half a minute into the game, the Cromo is in position and it opens fire as soon as the first enemy shows its face. The Cromo has no arm to speak of, but our scout is utterly fearless, not only spotting the enemy advance, but lobbing shells as fast as the loader can manage. The Tika probably doesn't expect to get its butt handed to it by a Cromwell, but that's exactly what happens. More enemies come into range, so Q to the face starts flying shells at them. The KV-3 is a tough heavy, but the Cromwell has no trouble taking it apart. The ARL is next. Uh, no? Okay, the T-3485 then. Unfortunately, our aggressive scout's luck has run out and the Cromwell blows up. The game goes on for a while, but let's jump to the end and take a look at the results. K to the face played for 4 minutes 36 seconds, did the most damage on the team, and received high caliber, patrol duty, and confederate awards. I'll say this scout did its job, and then so. The episode finale is a brothers in arms game from the NA region, with Derp in the face and stomach driving a pair of FB4202P. Medium tanks. This variant of the Centurion main battle tank has excellent gunnery characteristics, but it is lacking in armor and top speed. Our fighting twosome will have to carry the day with accurate shooting and tight cooperation. The FBs arrive at the bridge and start sending ordnance downrange using hold down tactics. Just look at the gun depression on these post World War tanks. A detachment of enemy armor executes a flanking maneuver and the FBs swing around to face the new threat. They have to split their attention when the original group of enemies renew their attack, and some opponents even manage to get into the rear. Derp in the face and stomach reacts in unison. The FBs swing their guns to face each threat, taking them out or forcing them into a retreat. Derp in the face spots an opportunity and pushes forward. Unfortunately, Stomach gets tracked at the worst possible moment, and a hail of gunfire blows the tank apart. Up in the face, jewels the heavy 112, killing it just in time to use its carcass as a shield against the lighter enemies. A furious 3 vs 1 battle ensues. And in the end, 
the FB4202P proves superior. There's still an ARL to deal with. The first exchange of shells drives the heavy into hiding, so Derp in the face goes forth and challenges it to close combat. The French tank blows up, securing victory with 10 kills for the platoon. Excellent teamwork, you two. Who needs armor when you can focus fire like that? So that was a cue and a derp to the face. Hmm, let's not read too much into that. I'm sure to hear from you in the comments about what you think I did wrong this week. Well, I'm Luke Nella, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So we got a lot of people unsure of battle tiers last week. Maybe I need to do a tutorial on the matchmaker. Or tier 11 tanks confirmed.